Eric Mother at Mother.com. I was just about to respond to a question from a paid subscriber, and the question is as regards price line. And just before I hit the send button, I realized maybe I can use this for the topic of the day. We can use the current price line charts to see whether we can find out where it could potentially bounce. So let's take, a, I'm going to use this video or this email question to make my video for the day. By the way, as I record this, we are seeing the market down about 1%. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to tie in with the current market situation in terms of the price line drop this past week. So let's take a look at the charts here. And we can see this week, price line is down about 11, 12%. That's a big drop. Now, this is consistent with what happens when we see a stock drop below the RSI 50 on whatever time frame. So we are dropping below 50 on the weekly time frame. That is why we are having a big down week. So the question here is, where can somebody place some type of a buy or where can somebody start buying the stock or the options in terms of call options when anticipating a move back to the upside, if at all? Of course, we don't know. And this is the genesis of this video. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, let's take a look at why the stock is dropping. We can see that it had previously cracked here sometime in early August during this one week down. So you take that information and realize that this area here on the RSI is where we can draw our uniformity resistance line. If you are new to this principle of uniformity, I am going to include a link in the description of the video that should explain this in more detail. But once we draw that line, anytime we struggle to hold above that line, especially if we see uniform activity as we did here, we can logically expect that to be a top. That's exactly what happened here. And of course, we see the outcome is this reversal here. So no surprise, really. And also don't forget that the blue line here, this line happens to be at about the 61.8 level, which just means that it is more of a reliable line. Now, if we move back and pull back from a, this is a two year weekly chart. So from a two year weekly chart, let's extend this and go out about five years. And what I'm trying to get at here is of course, the opposite of 61.8 in terms of the Fibonacci numbers is 38.2. So if I draw a line at about 38.2, I can expect to be where the stock has been bouncing over the last couple of years. So we see a bounce here off those highs, a bounce here off, I mean, off those lows there, and then a bounce off those lows in the price, double bottom before the below the line and back above it for those lows. And now we are here, we are testing this. now. What we can conclude from this is until we see the recovery, until we see positive uniform activity bounce on that blue line, we don't know where the floor is going to be. Now, if we go back out even further, now this is eight years of data, you can see that we can still see that even when you go beyond five years, we see that there's double bottom support here on the weekly for the lows there in 2010 double bottom support for the lows here of 2011 and of course there's two instances of support here and here of the lows of 2012 and of course we've seen all these other lows so of course one area to watch for in the coming weeks is whether the stock finds support at the 38.2 level or on its weekly chart now if we take a look at the long-term monthly chart But first, let's take a look at the three-year monthly chart. So three years of monthly data. And we can see here that the stock is coming back to test the RSI 50 on the monthly. So if you are going to buy this, you'd want to see some positive action that the stock is actually bouncing back above the RSI 50 level, just like it did here in early 2016. That would be what you'd want to see. So which means, in theory, you would have to give up 
the gains or the lows from here because here the stock had not turned up so you might have to give up give up some of the lows because it's only when the stock turned positive here that the RSI was pointing up when the RSI recaptured the RSI 50 level is when you get the bounce beginning so you need evidence if you try and buy the stock during the lows here that's a risk because you don't know if the stock goes lower you do need to see some visual evidence of support let the market come in and stabilize the stock before you try and find a bottom so th what I'm saying here is just like you had to have waited for this to turn positive before you consider this as support in the current market environment we're gonna have to wait to see whether it finds support at some point around the RSI 50 on the monthly which means a positive monthly gain before we can start anticipating a move back to the upside keep in mind we don't know whether this is a major high or not it could be that the stock goes much much lower we don't know that but if we see evidence of support then we can start taking the idea or the bet that the stock might find support now if we take a look at all data monthly we can see that coming off the lows of 2008 2009 it moved back above RSI 50 off the lows there bounced back above did not even crack the RSI 50 off the lows of 2010 here did not even get close to 50 here in fact and I don't want to spend time on this but this period here the stock refused completely refused to go below the 61.8 threshold during the lows here and here and that's another area of support but that's for another day and now we can see that the support here back above RSI 50 for those lows which were good entry levels for the movement back up and of course we discussed this uniform activity support of the lows of early 2016 so now we can start looking here in the coming months for support here also and you pointed this out in the chart you sent me this is also a potential for support based on this RSI lows line so maybe the stock comes back and finds this to be where it bounces if it bounces on this line in the coming months that's great that's an area of potential entry for a movement back to the upside now of course we know that if it comes back to test the blue line and fails that's gonna be another fresh sell signal now if we take a look at the daily chart the current so if we take a look at the daily chart what we can see here is right now the stock is trading below the RSI level of 30.9 as long as it remains below 30.9 this means that there's potential for lower prices this is just the exact opposite of what happens when a stock is trading above 30.9 so I mean above 69.1 a stock is assumed to be sideways to bullish and when a stock is trading below 30.9 we assume that the stock is sideways to bearish so as long as the RSI on the daily is trading below 30.9 we can assume that the stock is going to continue being under downside pressure So clearly what I'm getting at here is any entry level is weeks and months away because we need weekly support to happen or monthly support to take place and that's going to take a couple of months. Take a look at the hourly and we can see that the hourly has been spending time here below 30.9 and we know that below 30.9 stock tends to drift lower. So RSI 30.9 is a trap zone. And we can see evidence of this because if you take a look at this period here the stock has been down now it's trying to recover back above 30.9 which is trading above 30.9 but you can also see that there's a trend line here so this trend line what it tells us is that yes there was a break below that line which is this movement here or maybe even here and now it is coming back and struggling to move above this break line so all I'm saying here is that it's going to take many weeks and many months before this stock can truly give us any type of a 
reason for a bounce. Now, I did mention I was going to talk about the general market. So, so let's not underestimate the general market. The market is still trading close to all-time highs. And so there is market risk. And the market risk is real. And we should not underestimate that. Keep in mind, 75% of a stock's move is going to be based on the general market direction. Now, we've come a long ways off the lows of 2009. And off the lows here, we've had a major bull market. So even if the market was to correct, let's say, 20% or 30% or 50% or 61.8%, if the market was to correct with a substantial bear market move, I can assure you price line is going to also suffer. So let's not underestimate the market. The market itself is going to dictate the magnitude of what stocks are going to experience in the coming weeks, in the coming months, and in the coming years. If the market stays stable, then we can see Priceline and other stocks find a flow in relative quick order. But if this is a major, major high for the market worldwide, I can assume and we can assume that logically Priceline is going to reflect the same thing and it is also going to be down together with the market. Assuming the market drops, let's say, 20%, we can expect Priceline to drop more than that. If the market drops 30% from current highs, expect price line to drop more than 30%. If the market goes on to drop more than 50%, we can expect the market. In other words, it's a high beta stock, so it's going to move more than the market. When, it's when the market is moving higher, price line tends to move to the upside more than the market. And if price line is, if the market is going to drop and drop significantly, we can we can anticipate that price line is going to reflect that even more. So let's be aware of the, of the risk also that is tied in with the general market. And again, so on the monthly chart to conclude here, we have to wait for monthly data that shows support at the very least around the RSI 50 level, at the very least. That way we can see visual evidence before we can start anticipating a bounce. Hope that makes sense. Eric Mwadith, mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E, I see.